Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, where we'll be discussing how to demystify portfolio selection and prioritization with lean portfolio management. My name is Doug Wellsby, and I'm the channel manager here at Wickersoft. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jose Levy, our practice director of Azure Cloud Services and Agile PPM. During today's webinar, attendees will be on mute and the line will not be open for questions. However, feel free to use the GoToWebinar question feature to submit questions. I'll address these questions during the webinar and we'll respond via email if we do not get to your specific question. If for some reason you get distracted or pulled away from the webinar, no need to worry as I will be emailing a link to the presentation once it has been posted to our YouTube channel. And with that, I'll now turn the presentation over to Jose, who will be handling the webinar. And thanks everyone for joining us today to talk about demystifying portfolio selection and prioritization um, on lean portfolio management. This is a continuation of uh, the webinars that we've been doing on lean portfolio management. We were one of the first organizations to um, have offered the services for implementation and solutions on lean portfolio management after the um, launch of LPM by Scale Agile Inc. So we're gonna continue our update on um, the lean portfolio management framework and our solution. So in terms of our talking points today, um, I'm gonna review the LPM principles, in case you haven't seen them before, we'll go over the LPM framework steps and the key inputs, which is really, really important in terms of understanding what the LPM can provide your organization. We're gonna go over the one plan solution for lean portfolio management, and then we'll close with some uh, key takeaways. So why is this such an important topic right now? So lean portfolio management now um, is helping to address the concept of business agility. Um, if you do any of the Google search trends right now, business agility is taking over uh, digital transformation in a way uh, because all businesses understand that what they have to do now is execute faster uh, deliver value to their customers faster, and leverage more of the internal resources in order to uh, drive that business agility. So it's really a need for speed, and Lean Portfolio Management helps to address that. Uh, just as a, as a case study, everybody knows Microsoft uh, and the growth that the organization has had since Satya Nadella took over. Uh, part of that is the commitment top-down to DevOps, which is a, a core part of uh, the Scale Agile framework. So I have some interesting statistics here. In terms of the history, and this is directly from Microsoft, they actually started with DevOps around 2010. Um, it isn't really until 2014 when Satya Nadella comes in and basically uh, truly commits as a as a leader as a as leadership to uh, DevOps and in his case you know he came from the engineer organization so it was easier for him to actually um, explain the importance of this to the rest of the organization that occurs actually around 2014 and that's when the one ES and the common platform that everyone common code that everyone was going to use uh, came into being since then. You can see the outstanding uh, uh, metrics that they have in terms of where they're where they where they are now in terms of deployments per day, um, uh, in terms of the teams uh, that are actually uh, developing on this platform in a DevOps manner. Uh, the outcome, and it's not the only. Um, uh, change in the organization that led to this, but the outcome in terms of value creation for, for the organization in terms of market cap is pretty outstanding. From uh, $217 billion August 21st, 2009, uh, to what it is right now, which is you know over a uh, trillion dollars in value. And again, you can see that now we are in Sprint 154 in June 2019, 
with the 82,000 deployments per day. This is all public information, by the way, and there's a lot of great background from Microsoft on how they actually uh, accomplish this. Dean Leffingo himself, um, prior to the, the, the latest release, stated that really what we're after is supporting businesses to uh, have better business results uh, faster and a more reliable basis. And all the case studies for lean portfolio management uh, deal with four major uh, improvement uh, metrics. Time to market, uh, quality, productivity, and engagement. And uh, in terms of uh, the important ones from a customer perspective are time to market and uh, quality. So you can see that they're pretty significant. Those translate uh, immediately to uh, a higher NPS score and eventually greater cash flow. And the others have to do more uh, with internal uh, KPIs in terms of productivity and engagement, and just as important in order to uh, deliver value uh, in the organization. So real quick, want to go to where, how we got to the safe LPM principles, and then we'll try to deconstruct those four uh, items there. It started with the Agile Manifesto. Everybody knows the Agile Manifesto and really the reasons why it came about. Uh, Scale Agile Inc. creates SAFE and the SAFE uh, House of Lean as core principles that uh, an organization has to ascribe in order to begin a SAFE uh, Scale Agile transformation. And we have Lean Portfolio Management now which really is driven by uh, four safe principles, taking an economic view, um, basing milestones on objective evaluation of working systems, and you know that's really focusing on an MVP and doing uh, a demonstration of that MVP, visualizing uh, and limit whip in order to reduce batch sizes, so that's really controlling uh, the amount of work that you're gonna be able to deliver so you can commit to that work. And then the last one is decentralized decision making. And that will apply within lean portfolio management, um, both top down and bottom up, uh, where, we, where we manage the portfolio Kanban, which we'll talk about in a second. So in the end, really, what we have to consider is that lean portfolio management really applies lean agile principles. And what we're trying to do is improve selection and prioritization of investments to deliver customer value. Now, that seems kind of generic, but investments in this case are gonna be our epics, um, how we deliver value to our customers in our product. And then um, our customer value, again, driven by uh, very specific metrics in terms of uh, either innovation accounting or KPIs that um, we are expecting from um, taking our epic and putting it into our product. One last point on um, when comparing to traditional PPM, you know, it inhibits the flow of value, and um, there are some benefits or counterpoints from lean portfolio management that we have in order to overcome these challenges. And uh, you can see that lean budgets and guardrails is one of them, and here we'll talk in a second about how we actually budget at the uh, a portfolio at the value stream level, which includes um, solutions. We're going to be doing rolling rolling way planning, um, both from a portfolio standpoint and also a program planning because we're doing program increments on a quarterly basis. Um, we are trying to really negotiate capacity to to deliver that value uh, to the customer through our epics, and then finally we have a uh, a lean business case that should allow us to put the investment consideration of, of the EPIC quicker. And we'll, we'll actually show that. So let's quickly go through um, some of the steps. So the first one is the portfolio, a lean portfolio management really deals in managing this portfolio backlog of EPICs. So uh, not to, uh, underestimate the need to do program planning um, at the, the teams level or, or team uh, managing teams backlog uh, for stories. But essentially, what we're doing is we're going to be 
creating these epics, passing them down uh, to the program manager uh, in order for them to be decomposed um, as features into the program. Uh, so this is the top down and bottom up. We will be obtaining uh, once uh, you know the the program has actually deconstructed the epic and has feature estimates. We'll be able to see exactly you know how we came about whether our estimates were uh, correct and you know the feasibility of being able to deliver uh, on the epic. So I've, I've shown this before to, to to operationalize the lean portfolio management process, and I'm going to break it down further. But essentially, we have some inputs. We are managing our epics in a portfolio Kanban, which lead us to a, a portfolio roadmap by value stream. So the portfolio is made up of value streams. Now, it's interesting within the roadmap that you can see the investment horizons, and it's a long-term portfolio. So we're not talking about that annual planning. We're looking forward to see how we're going to deliver value to our customers over the long term. If we break it down further, just for, for simplicity's sake, I've really added three, three sections um, within LPM. First, you have your building blocks, and we'll get into that in a second and what they're all about. But really, what we're trying to drive is alignment. Leadership and the business have uh, defined a strategy. We have to apply that and align it to, uh, uh, to our portfolios. And then we have uh, an amount of funds that we are going to invest uh, through lean budgets. The second major component is the first stages of the portfolio Kanban, which I've identified as ideation and analysis. And it really is where you create a, we create a funnel. That's pretty straightforward in terms of actually creating a pipeline of work or demand. We put it through a review uh, bucket or phase, and then we get to analyzing, and um, we'll see in a second, we'll talk more, but really this is where the go, no go decision is. So in terms of actually uh, moving an epic forward in the Kanban, it's within analyzing. So this is selection. Uh, when we get to the portfolio backlog is really where we're going to do the prioritization. Uh, not that we can't do it in analyzing, but it's primarily going to be doing, done in the uh, backlog because this is where we have our point estimate for our MVPs. And we, together with other criteria, by the way, it's not the only um, way of um, determining prioritization, but we're going to use um, here um, our MVP points um, and a score that we're going to derive from WISGIF, which is all over, weight as shortest job first. You see that we actually begin calculating where this uh, shortest job first as early as reviewing, and we continue to use it through our portfolio backlog. And the rest of the, the phases is really about implementing, uh, and really at this point, we're taking that EPIC that is approved and prioritized, and we're uh, sending it to our EPIC owners um, in order for them to, and the teams to begin actually deconstructing that epic into um, its features and um, increments where they're going to be delivered. So let's go over the, these three phases real quick because it's important to understand the um, artifacts that we're going to be using. So the first one is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, most organizations have objectives uh, and key results, so we're trying to accomplish um, a business result, uh, and we're going to actually define what that is that business result and have a metric. So it's really important that we have a KPI in that key result. So in most organizations, whether implicitly or explicitly, there are strategic themes we can uh, extrapolate and complete. The second is the most important. It's really the portfolio canvas. So this is an adjusted business model canvas. And really, it's about uh, defining our value streams, which are comprised of our solutions. Now, if you're already doing SAFE at the program level, this is going to be pretty straightforward because um, you have already these defined as part of a SAFE transformation. If you have not, then this is a critical step. You really cannot move forward in implementing LPM without actually defining your value streams and your solutions. Um, the other components are um, you know, pretty much the same business model canvas. We have budget and KPIs also here. 
Um, so again, we are putting budget to a portfolio, which is made up of value streams. And these are development value streams, by the way. And we have KPIs or revenue that we're going to expect. The third component of alignment is really lean budgets and guardrails. Two of the items are um, more explicit events, ceremonies that will take place. Um, one is actually uh, driven by um, in investment horizon. In other words, we're going to categorize every one of the epics into horizons in order for us to determine um, how we are investing into our um, solutions, into our value streams. And you can see here that we have, you know, um, investment horizon zero through three and some prescriptive uh, percentages where the budget for the portfolio should be. So these are key inputs. We have if we can complete this, then we actually uh, can begin then to uh, operationalize that portfolio Kanban. So let's go to the second step, intake analysis. So the two critical artifacts here are in, is the EPIC hypothesis statement, which we can use as early as funnel. You can have a ideation page, but if you wanted to, the EPIC hypothesis statement is critical to reviewing, the reviewing uh, phase, but here you can see that the format is more um, as a user story uh, at a higher level. So it's important because the organization has to learn how to actually articulate an epic. So um, within the context of LPM, this is a suggested format. Once we get to reviewing we, and we go into analyzing, we develop the lean business case. And this, I think, is probably next to the uh, portfolio canvas is probably the next most important artifact because within it you will actually uh, define your story points, the cost of uh, the portfolio item, which is an epic, and then the return that we're going to receive. Uh, and you'll see right above that we have go, no go. So that is the decision um, criteria right below and go no go is where we say yes we want to move forward with this um, with this epic uh, you know it, there, there could be some flexibility in your organization how you actually um, use a lean business case uh, the point is that you should try to make it concise and clear for everyone to complete and not be bogged down in analysis um, because that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to just uh, move value through our portfolio Kanban um, with um, with agility. So then comes prioritization and epic planning, and here's really where um, LPM uh, prescriptively uh, tells us that where did your shortest job first is really the way WSJF or WSJF is the way to actually do prioritization. Um, it's a it's a calculation that tries to score uh, an epic uh, based on you know how what's the cost of not delivering, and what's the size. So um, you can see how cost of delay is calculated. I think the, the, I, for, for time's sake, I will get to you know, what the actual score is. And you can see that the highest, um, the highest duration epics, if, this, if these were epics, are going to actually receive the lowest score. And I've had, um, I've had customers, you know, Come to me and say, well, that really means that you know the largest jobs aren't going to get done; they're going to receive lowest priority. Well, that's not necessarily the case. First of all, my counter to that is that this um, th there are long duration epics, but in most cases, it's because it wasn't estimated properly, uh, and we're talking about something much bigger than a uh, minimal viable product. The WSGIF and the epic items are supposed to lead to an MVP, and that's a really important concept to understand. We're not um, here talking about, um, you know, we're, we're trying to get to uh, the, that smallest uh, delivered product that we can have, not necessarily, you know, an end-all, be-all uh, product. So you have to make sure that, you know, the, the epic is um, relative in context and not, uh, you know, an entire multi-year system. We're only talking about a, 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 a one part of it in an MVP. Um, the second is that this is not the only scoring um, met, um, metric that we can use, and we'll show that you know alignment is a, another important one. It could be that um, you know alignment overrides or regulatory uh, compliance overrides 
um, scoring by which if. Once this takes place, then we are in the portfolio backlog and we're supposed to use um, our points, which if, and any other criteria in order to do prioritization. So in the end, these are the primary tools, but not really the, the only ones that you could be using with your, within your organization. If there's other, others that you need to use, then go right ahead. So let's talk about our one plan solution for lean portfolio management. Uh, so one plan is a product developed and implemented by Wickersoft, which is it has four primary attributes. It's, it's modern, it's integrated, it's collaborative, and best of breed. Well, many tools can actually say that, but in our case, we've actually taken years of experience to actually reflect that in the solution. We have a lean portfolio management solution that we built for one plan, and really is um, for organizations that are currently in uh, agile transformation, scale agile transformations, and want to use any of the tools that they currently have to, for teams to work in an agile fashion, whether it's Azure DevOps, Jira, really it, it, we're indiscriminate. That's where we actually address the integrated and collaborative. We can bring data from really any solution into one plan and allow that top-down planning to meet the bottom-up work that teams are delivering, our programs are, are also delivering. So in this case, we're showing that you know, we can bring data from Planner, we can bring data even from Project Desktop, and we can bring data from uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, what we're trying to drive is everyone in the organization that is actually contributing to uh, the delivery of value through Lean Portfolio to have that work reflected, um, as well as providing the stakeholders um, that are actually executing Lean Portfolio all the tools needed to do top-down planning. So, and we'll get into the solution in a second just to give you a quick feature flash, but one plan focuses on uh, five major feature sets, portfolio planning, the actual work planning, financials, resources, and then reporting and insights. In this case, we are delivering uh, a solution for lean portfolio management. And if you happen to be working on any other solution, we can actually integrate all of that data into um, one plan. I think from, uh, from uh, the most important I think part for, for a safe, for the safe solution is that what we're trying to do is automate and operationalize lean portfolio within your organization. Yes, there might be variations, yes, there are culture, but in the end, we want to follow, uh, you know, the guidance for uh, achieving lean portfolio management and business agility. So now we're going to provide you with a overview of one plan for lean portfolio management. So I will switch screens here one second. So everyone should be seeing now my uh, browser screen, and I am within Microsoft Teams. Now, the reason we start in Teams, it is because um, Teams is the unified collaboration platform for Microsoft, and now we are embedding our one plan solution within Teams. Uh, so in this case, we have a lean PMO. We've started with a uh, SharePoint form that we've also integrated within the environment in order to show how we can capture ideas and also um, register uh, our portfolios and our, and our value streams for our lean portfolio. I'm not going to go into the details uh, of the solution. I just wanted to point out that if you happen to have a demand management process and forms, we can definitely uh, integrate that within the solution. If not, you can use the um, capabilities that we have within uh, within one plan to do that. And again, we stress SharePoint because it's universal. Pretty much everyone has um, you know, SharePoint within their Office 365 account. And, and as you can see, you can integrate it directly into Teams in order to make that experience uh, available for everyone. Uh, just uh, as I, I'm, I'm going to move away from you, but I just want to point out that you can see here that, you know, whatever uh, fields you want to capture and show within your forms, you'll be able to do that as part of your ideation process. Again, this is uh, the funnel 
uh, bucket within lean portfolio management that we're going to address with ideas and again it's within SharePoint so but you can see also at the top that I have all of my uh, areas of work either applications um, or um, content areas within uh, within within teams for lean portfolio management so in this case I'm going to uh, hit portfolio which actually takes me directly into one plan. So this is one plan within Teams. And again, we're trying to drive collaboration. As I said, it's a, it's a modern, integrated, uh, collaborative, best of breed platform that we're providing uh, to do your top-down portfolio management as well as your bottoms-up work that's coming up from um, your... Uh, the different teams that are working on um, value streams and, and applications. So in this case, um, I have three different portfolios, as you see. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of the user interface, we provide uh, the ability to see items on a list form. You'll see here that we have board. Um, within here, uh, we have the ability to have different views depending on what you want to look at, uh, board being your, your um, the additional Kanban, and then the ability to also see roadmaps. You have dashboard, which would allow us to see reports uh, directly from Power BI, in this case, embedded within our one plan application. So on the left-hand navigation, again, for one plan, we have, uh, if you want to capture timesheets, you know, we do have timesheets uh, in the system. Uh, this is important uh, if you want to uh, track actuals uh, by managed uh, time period. Portfolio is the view that we're currently in. And um, from here, I can also look at resource plans for at any level, really, of the, of the hierarchy. And I'll talk about hierarchy in a second. We have our scheduler, which is uh, the ability to uh, assign or book resources directly to uh, projects or epics and then we have our plans which are um, either in this case projects or epics and finally you know the resource center where you can see uh, how um, the resource profiles of folks uh, in in the in the portfolio application in this in this particular configuration we have portfolios, value streams, uh, epics, and we go down to features. So that's important and we'll show in a second why, because we actually want to not only show our portfolio backlog, but also show, show our program increments of features that are going to be delivered. We've included here projects just to show that if you happen to have NFRs or anything that uh, is not managed um, in a Scrum Agile fashion can actually be brought into uh, the the one plan solution and you can see it uh, in its waterfall form within the uh, lean portfolio and so I'm going to open it up just one more level so you can see that um, here we have projects underneath our upgrades and migrations valley stream and if I go under my Fabricam valley stream you can see the epics that are actually underneath um, that that particular value stream so we've gone from portfolio to value stream to epic and uh, those are the three and if we go one more level you can see that we have features here uh, also showing so those are the four levels that we have within this demonstration now as i've opened this you can see that the rest of the summaries are showing in this particular view we have estimated end dates uh, budget benefits you know what bucket and uh, we are in the program increment and the wish shift uh, for prioritization um, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this just so that um, we can focus on a particular level. So the benefits of uh, using uh, one plan. First of all, if you're tracking, if you want to define the level within the, the uh, lean portfolio management, you can. So you see here as I uh, open up uh, my quick guide on the left here for the portfolio, and I'm going uh, on quick cloud and mobile first, I can actually... Um, see all the different actions and all the different objects that I'm tracking. So if I go to details real quick, I have my uh, portfolio definition or portfolio canvas, which is the artifact 
that um, is prescribed by Lean Portfolio Management, Safe Lean Portfolio Management. You can see that I have uh, a number of different fields that I can complete. These, by the way, you can, um, uh, they're obviously uh, editable and you can uh, define define them uh, as part of the configuration of the tool but uh, it's important to note that we have you know the ability to you know follow and have uh, at the portfolio canvas level you know the form so that you can um, have this uh, be shared with the rest of the organization if we go back and go down one uh, level we can do the same thing uh, at the at the value stream level and uh, again we have uh, a number of uh, different fields that reflect our development value stream canvas. Uh, so again, and th again, these are editable in terms of being able to uh, insert any type of information. Obviously, they're reportable. I, I'll note that if you wanted to actually do portfolio budgeting, you can also do that. And you see here that we have uh, the, a budget for the actual value stream. So the value stream is going to be made up of the uh, budgets for the solution so you can actually define a value stream budget and uh, these um, cost categories and cost types are uh, editable and you can see that we can also track budget forecast and actual so this is a very good uh, way of being disciplined about uh, tracking your portfolio budget um, if we go back to a portfolio we will go one level uh, we can go down then to our our epics and you can see here that this particular value stream portfolio has uh, a number of different epics and similarly uh, we have forms for our epic definition and the epic definition also follows the lean portfolio uh, uh, Kanban so you can see here that we have uh, our this particular epic is in the implementing stage uh, we do have the ability at the EPIC level to define financials, resources, even a schedule and reporting. And um, as I showed before, uh, the lean business case now is shown because this is uh, the way that we are going to actually um, define our EPICs uh, within lean uh, portfolio management. And um, you can see here that we have uh, th these initial uh, fields come from our what's called our epic hypothesis statement, which we define within funnel, and then we have uh, you know more uh, numeric and um, uh, objective criteria for defining whether we're going to uh, move forward with uh, the epic or not. In this case, we already are implementing, so we've actually gone from analyzing to the go to go go no go actually took place, and we're actually within uh, within the implementing. Um, phase if we go here within financials we see that we have uh, a budget and we, if we go within resources we also have uh, resources that have been defined for the um, um, the epic so we will use that later to do our prioritization uh, we can at any at any level if we want to just focus on that particular uh, level of the hierarchy so you can see here that you know I just by going to plan type um, I can you know, focus on that particular um, level, and um, I have Epic here, uh, but I could you know easily go to features, which are the features that we're going to focus on from um, our program increment. And um, let's let's uh, go back to our portfolio so we can uh, drill down and see um, what we can do if we wanted to actually. Um, go to the epic level and do prioritization and that was kind of a first exercise that we can do because one plan provides you with the prioritization features so if i select prioritize here i can um, start looking at what my wischief uh, levels are and you note that i have here um, um, the wish the the uh, levels that were defined when the epics were defined and uh, I can see that my uh, support uh, customer mobile is actually at a position of number seven within uh, our prioritization when it actually has a value of five and it actually has 
uh, some of the largest benefits uh, that we can uh, provide and is actually implementing. So I think what I what I'm going to do in this case is uh, simply you know move it up um, uh, to a higher position so that the rest of the organization sees that it is uh, important to us. So I've gone through and done that prioritization. Uh, you know the the other exercise that I could do is um, actually see what the resource load is. So I'm going to uh, deselect uh, prioritization and go to my resource plans. And I can uh, focus on um, support customer mobile, which is you know our most important uh, epic uh, right now. And we can see that uh, there are some teams that are actually uh, over allocated. And I can see that uh, support customer mobile, which is um, uh, work assigned to Team 3, they r really don't have enough capacity to actually work and support customer mobile because they're also doing um, um, another uh, epic that has to do with uh, sales reports. And I can't actually uh, get to uh, that particular uh, epic here. You can see that I have... Um, it's an epic that is actually off track um, and it's still an analyzing which um, you know it's still not actually implementation so I think what I'm going to do for uh, sake of this exercise is take it off and see if I do that I um, not only I relieve uh, the over allocation that I have on team three so I can go ahead and um, deselect the epic and you know then save it as a scenario um, in order to uh, re let the rest of the organization know that we're just going to hold off on our um, epic for reviewing sales reports, uh, it's off track um, and it's over. It's it's creating an over allocation. So, in order to meet um, you know the priority of my support customer uh, customers using mobile, I'm going to go ahead and um, you know not not uh, execute. Um, my sales reporting epic that I have here defined. So that's one exercise that I can complete in order to remove that over allocation. The other that I could have done is add additional work. So I could go to my resource plans and then have another team participate. So we have team one here. Uh, it looks like, um, you know, uh, team two, for instance, now has capacity since we removed it from, we re removed the work also from the sales reporting epic and now I can actually also assign them to it. So that would be another way of um, uh, providing more capacity to, to the EPIC. So I'm going to go and also show, let's go ahead and click off. Um, we, we are at the EPIC level. And if I wanted to actually see how all these EPICs um, are going to be reflected um, within my Lean Portfolio Kanban, I can go here. I've switched the board. Instead of Portfolio, I'm going to be looking at EPICs. And I can see here that um, uh, EPICs in their uh, Lean Portfolio Kanban are being shown. And um, Support Customer Mobile, which is right here, is the one that we're, we're most focused on. It's, it is in implementation. So, um, you know, if I wanted to actually look at, uh, here's all of its um, metadata that we were looking at in the form. Um, if I needed to edit any of that quickly, um, we are in good shape in order to be able to uh, deliver um, all of the features that are within this epic. Um, and if we wanted to also look then from a program standpoint how um, the features for that epic look, here we can then go to our feature uh, backlog and these are the uh, five features that are currently in play for our support customers using mobile. Uh, so our program increments are shown, the summaries for budget are shown, and you can see that we have different metadata uh, uh, for each of them. And we can go uh, back also if, I, if we wanted to and um, look at them uh, in more detail if we wanted to by just going into feature. And likewise, as I uh, stated earlier, we would um, we have the ability to define, um, you know, uh, 
uh, metadata for the feature. Now at this level, we recommend that um, we work directly within um, Azure DevOps. So here, uh, if we go back um, and focus on the team specifically, so here we have our uh, support customer uh, mobile uh, team. Uh, we can see that uh, that particular Epic has uh, integrated Azure uh, boards within its teams, and we can come in here and see the specific uh, work that's being done. These are the, the same five uh, features that uh, are being built as part of uh, support customer using mobile. And then if the uh, product uh, owner, Scrum Master, uh, Epic owner wanted to actually come in here and uh, see specifically the, the work that was being done. They can, you know, go back and forth between uh, Azure boards. And one plan, the data is integrated, so uh, they can uh, easily work within teams uh, on both uh, the work that's being completed in Azure boards and making any edits uh, accordingly, as well as uh, the one plan uh, resource management capability and uh, budgeting capability, both at the Epic level as well as uh, as it rolls up to the um, uh, value stream and portfolio. So if we go back to our uh, lean uh, PMO teams, uh, we have also within teams the ability to integrate Power BI. So I'm just going to show here an example of how we can uh, look at the different epics uh, within reporting in Power BI. So all of the all of the data that is coming from Azure DevOps as well as uh, being generated top down in one plan can be reported on uh, within a Power BI. So this is a content pack that we've developed specifically for the solution, and it's you know entirely. Um, editable and, and can be changed to meet your specific uh, reporting requirements. We have here uh, on the bottom, you can see the tabs that are part of Power BI. We've used Power BI, you know, this is pretty standard in terms of having different tabs that reflect uh, views and dashboards that you're interested in. Here we have an Epic dashboard, our Fabricam uh, Epic, um, our, our um, Fabricam Valley Stream is actually shown here with all of its Epics underneath. If we actually want it to uh, focus on one particular epic, uh, we can and you know bring in the data for supp support customer using mobile, which is the one that uh, we are most interested in. And um, again, any of the uh, summary attributes that are, are being tracked in either Azure DevOps and metrics that are being tracked in Azure DevOps and one plan can be reflected in a very simple epic one pager like this. Uh, if we're looking at uh, resource information, we can look at resource plan versus capacity. In our case, we're looking at uh, team number three, and you can see that we're doing okay here in terms of uh, capacity and demand. They're pretty much gonna be uh, uh, allocated entirely to our support customer mobile uh, Epic. So um, there's uh, that particular view from a resource standpoint. Now, we have a number of different resource uh, dashboards that are available uh, this one here um, again can we can drill into our team three which is really the one that we're focused on and see if um, you know that during the period of time that we're going to be working on support customer bubble we have the capacity it seems like we do have capacity so um, we're going to be in good shape and you know if you wanted to actually share reporting outside uh, you know, you, this is also part of, uh, you know, Power BI, as I said, so you can access Power BI externally. And you can see here that uh, we have a dashboard that has uh, a more uh, summary uh, metrics on the entire lean portfolio. Uh, here we have ROI versus risk, but you can also view different uh, metrics. Uh, our product ROIs are showing here. If you wanted to actually track uh, burn up uh, and uh, burn downs from uh, Azure DevOps, you can bring those metrics here and uh, do that accordingly for for our particular you know epics and sprints. Um, issue count uh, if you wanted to summarize that. Here's uh, our prioritization scores in Widget, which is our really the the focus of our of our webinar. 
in terms of being able to use not only WSGIF scores, but also any type of prioritization that you want to uh, perform uh, when you're actually defining your EPICs. Uh, you can do that and then, you know, have them reflected in, in reporting within, uh, within the tool. Let's go back here. If you want to track issues and risks, those are also available, uh, and we can uh, report on them accordingly within uh, within our content packs. Okay, so that uh, concludes our overview of the solution of our one plan solution. I'm going to go back and just have some closing thoughts on our so some key takeaways from lean portfolio management so as you can see lean portfolio management can enable business agility and we have some uh, some steps here to, to begin your journey in terms of lean portfolio management the first is if you're interested in uh, generating greater flow of value to customers uh, there's a, the focus of lean portfolio managers exclusively that so you're going to, um, you know, try to accelerate and not be bogged down um, by, you know, the traditional stage gates. Here we're really trying to define how we can um, deliver, you know, the capabilities to customers through enhancing our um, our value streams and our solutions by having these epics defined and then having them um, work through in a um, lean portfolio Kanban manner. Uh, so you're going to define your portfolios, which are your value streams and arts, and then align them to strategic themes. This is really important because uh, alignment is one of the key concepts, and you begin by having those foundational inputs that I um, defined initially um, in order for you to have them uh, be um, you know, mapped to your value streams. You're going to Focus on lean budget and guardrail principles uh, to define your horizons. Uh, have particip participatory budgeting uh, to make sure that you can define the, the uh, value stream budget, uh, portfolio budgets top down, and then have uh, capacity of epics be um, reduced as you put them through the lean portfolio uh, Kanban. You're going to uh, leverage your existing ideation to start your Lean Portfolio Kanban, and that's you know, essentially however you define right now your uh, ideas. Uh, those are going to go into your funnel, and then you're going to go through and develop them uh, in the Lean Portfolio Kanban, you know, in the second step being reviewing with your EPIC hypothesis statement. Uh, the Lean Business Case follows in reviewing and analyzing uh, to make sure that uh, you focused on, MV on the MVP and uh, you have uh, given you know the proper analysis not only to WSGIF but the other prioritization criteria that we talked about uh, in order to make uh, you know, your decisions on you know which uh, epics are going to move forward uh, in the portfolio backlog. Uh, we've explained the we explained in the WSGIF scoring uh, method, and uh, that will provide you, you know, uh, better planning and estimating of, of your MVPs. It's really important that you focus on MVPs, which is that's really the, uh, you know, how we are going to uh, define whether an epic is uh, worthwhile moving forward in our in our framework. And then, uh, as we as we showed, you know, use your WSGIF and other scoring for selection and prioritization. It doesn't have to be the only. Uh, criteria but uh, you know it is the primary criteria within lean portfolio management so for all of those interested in, in lean portfolio management and enterprise agile we have a free assessment in which we can uh, we ask you a series of questions and um, re prerequisites uh, in order to have a um, a sound uh, implementation of lean portfolio management and from there we can uh, define a high level roadmap uh, for you to consider as part of your uh, lean portfolio management journey and then finally if you're interested if you're already 
in some form of uh, Scrum Agile implementation, scale Scrum Agile implementation. Uh, we encourage you to evaluate one plan for Lean Portfolio Management. So we, we provide trials um, uh, on a limited basis for you to see if uh, we can accelerate and provide more insight for uh, your organization through Lean Portfolio Management. Uh, if uh, any questions um, that you have on the subject, please feel free to write. Uh, I provide my email there and uh, available at any time to have that uh, that discussion. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you for your time and um, hope that uh, we get to hear from you again. Uh, please feel free to make contact and please be on the lookout for our uh, additional webinars on lean portfolio management in the future. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time and uh, hope to speak to you soon.